Project Management Professional Training Session 11 Part 2 Means to Facilitate Team Management The following input documents, or information in them, serve as means to facilitate team management. Team Charter, an output of the plan resource management process. The Team Charter document contains information about team values, operating guidelines, and ground rules. These values and rules help facilitate team management by guiding how to make decisions and resolve issues and conflicts. This further facilitates team management if the team took part in developing the team charter and agreed to it. Issues Log and Lessons Learned Register The Issues Log can be used to facilitate a team-related issue resolution by logging in the issue information, including a resolution target date. Issues generally involve obstacles that can stop the project team from achieving the project objectives. A written log should be maintained that contains the list of team members responsible for resolving the issues by target dates. The purpose of the issues log is to monitor the issues until they are closed. The lessons learned register can facilitate team management in the sense that you can use it to record ongoing lessons learned in managing the team to subsequently use them to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of team management. Enterprise Environmental Factors and Organizational Process Assets The project management team can use the following EEFs and OPAs in managing the project team. Enterprise environmental factors that should be available to the project management team for use in managing the team include bulletin boards, newsletters, and internal websites for information sharing. The OPAs that can influence team management include the organization's policies, procedures, and system for rewarding the team members. Certificates of appreciation, recognition dinners, and bonus structures are some other examples. To manage the team effectively, you should be aware of the tools and techniques that can be used to do so. Tools and techniques for managing the project team. Interpersonal skills used to manage the team include leadership skills, one of the three skill types in a project manager's talent triangle, covered in Chapter 2, influencing, also covered in Chapter 2 in much detail, decision-making, covered a few times in different situations so far, conflict management and emotional intelligence. Influencing. Influencing means getting individuals or groups to do what you want them to do without necessarily having the formal authority to mandate an outcome from them. It becomes even more important when you realize that under many formal and informal organizational structures, project managers have no or very little practical authority. So, in that case, to get work done, your only option is to use influencing skills, such as collecting all information about the given issue or situation, understanding all different perspectives on it, listening actively and effectively, clearly explaining your points and perspective while demonstrating consideration and understanding for the other perspective, having the ability to persuade, and reaching an agreement without damaging the ongoing working relationship. Decision-making, in managing the team, you will be dealing with the team and the organization making decisions by choosing from the options available. However, first you need to create the choices by using your skills of negotiation and influence on the organization and the team, as well as stimulating a creative environment within your team. For that you should always do your homework, collect all relevant information, including the relevant environmental factors about the issue at hand and analyze this information. In your analysis, don't forget to include the risk factors. After creating choices and analyzing, the decision is made by following the rules in the team charter. Emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, in general, is the ability to sense and manage one's own and other people's emotions, where manage means to understand the emotions and their impact and control the impulse to adapt in order to change the situation. You and your team can use emotional intelligence to reduce the tension among team members to create an environment of collaboration by anticipating and understanding each other's reactions and emotions. You can also use relationship management, a part of emotional intelligence that guides how to influence, inspire, and develop the team while resolving conflict. Conflict management The purpose of conflict management is to nourish positive working relationships among the team members so they result in increased productivity. Common sources of conflict include the following. Scarce resources resulting in unsatisfied needs. Scheduling priorities. 
personal work styles, perceptions, values, feelings, and emotions, power struggles. You can reduce the number of conflicts by setting ground rules, clearly defining roles and goals, and implementing solid project management practices. In this the team charter is important. Tip differences of opinion should not be considered sources of conflict. If managed properly, differences can be very healthy and can lead to better solutions and thereby increase productivity. Initially, the project team members who are parties to a conflict should be given the opportunity to resolve it themselves. If the team members fail to resolve the conflict and it becomes a negative factor for the project, you, the project manager, should facilitate the conflict resolution, usually in private and using a direct and collaborative approach. If the conflict continues, you might have no option other than to use formal procedures, such as disciplinary actions. Different project managers normally use different styles or methods in different situations. The choice of the conflict resolution style or technique may be influenced by the following factors. Does the conflict need to be resolved for the long term, or is a short-term resolution fine? The intensity of the conflict and the relative importance of resolution in context of the project. Urgency of resolving the conflict. Positions taken by the parties involved in the conflict. The first step in conflict management is analyzing the nature and type of the conflict, which might involve asking questions. You can meet with, interview, the parties involved in the conflict. The next step is to determine the management strategy. Different management strategies are summarized here. Avoidance, in this strategy, at least one party to the conflict ignores, or withdraws, from the conflict and decides not to deal with the problem. This strategy can be used by the project manager as a cooling-off period, to collect more information, or when the issue is not critical. However, if the issue is critical, this is the worst resolution strategy and can give rise to lose-lose situations if both parties withdraw or yield-lose situations if one party withdraws. This strategy is also called withdrawal strategy. Direct, in this approach, also called force, one party uses any available means to get its way, often at the expense of the other party. This is a win-lose situation. It can be justified in some situations, such as when the basic rights of a party in conflict are at stake or when you want to set a precedent. However, if used unfairly from a power position, such as if it is a management style, it can be destructive for team development. This strategy can cause the conflict to escalate, and the losing party might attempt to retaliate. When used by a party in power, it is also called forcing. Compromising, in this strategy, also called reconcile, both parties gain something and give up something. This is a lose-win-slash-lose-win strategy. You can use this strategy to achieve temporary solutions and to avoid a damaging power struggle when there is time pressure. The downside of this approach is that both parties can look at the solution as a lose-lose situation and can be distracted from the merits of the issues involved. In this way, this short-term solution can hurt the long-term objectives of the project. Accommodation, this strategy, also called smoothing, is opposite of the direct or force strategy. One party attempts to meet the other party's needs at the expense of their own. This might be a justifiable strategy when the concerns of the accommodating party are less significant than the concerns of the other party in the context of the project. Sometimes it's used as a goodwill gesture. However, it is a lose when approach, the accommodating party loses and the accommodated party wins and the accommodating party runs the risk of losing credibility and influence in the future. However, this strategy, when applied carefully and if both parties become accommodating so they can meet in the areas of agreement, can turn into a win-win situation. This is why this technique is also called smoothing. Collaboration, this strategy, also called problem-solving, is based on reaching consensus among the parties in the conflict. Both parties work together to explore several solutions and agree on the one that satisfies the needs and concerns of both parties. This is a win-win strategy and is generally considered the best of all the strategies because it helps build commitment and promotes goodwill between the parties involved. A form of collaboration is called confronting. You confront the problem causing the conflict head-on and then solve that problem through an open dialogue and by examining several alternatives. 
Tip you should always look for how the different processes overlap and interact with each other. For example, conflict management is a technique for managing the team. However, the purpose of conflict management is to nourish the positive working relationships among the team members that result in increased productivity, so resolving a conflict can also be looked upon as a team development activity. As mentioned earlier, leadership skills were covered in Chapter 2, and you should already be familiar with project management information systems and use one for managing the team, as it contains the schedule, calendar, and other management application and features. Caution! Not only can you earn quite a few points on the PMP exam, but you can also be a very effective project manager if you realize this, confront the problem or the issue head-on, but do your homework, investigate, research, or analyze, before taking action. While you are managing the team using these techniques, you might recommend some actions as an output of the manage project team process. Study Checkpoint 10.2 each comment in the first column of the following table points to a conflict resolution. Strategy. Match each comment with the corresponding strategy in the second column. Comment conflict resolution technique. A. Let's have a face-to-face -face meeting and hear. Out both parties. 1. Avoidance slash withdrawal. B. Both of you have to meet halfway, you can't. Get everything all the time. 2. Competition slash forcing. See, I'm the one who is running the show here. And I have made the decision. 3. Compromising slash smoothing. D. Okay, I see your point now. I was thinking. More at a personal level, your view is more. Compatible with the project's objectives. I. Guess for that reason I can live with your. Approach. 4. Accommodation. E. You guys are not even listening to my. Argument. I feel I'm wasting my time. So, I'm not going to discuss it with you any longer. 5. Collaboration. F. Sit down, talk it out, and design the best solution that is good for all parties. 6. Confronting slash problem solving. Output of managing the project team. The output from managing the project team includes change requests, example, recommended corrective and preventive actions, and updates to organizational process assets and the project management plan. Change requests, you or the manage project team process might generate recommendations for corrective and preventive actions and other changes as discussed here. Recommended corrective actions, a corrective action is a direction for executing the project work to bring the future performance in line with what is expected in the project management plan. The corrective actions recommended during project team management might include the following. Staffing changes, such as changing assignments of the team members, replacing team members, for example, the ones who leave, and outsourcing some work. Training for the team or for individual team members. Recognition and rewards based on the reward system. Disciplinary actions. Recommended preventive actions. A preventive action is a direction to perform an activity to stop or reduce the probability of an anticipated event occurrence generally associated with a project risk. Preventive action can also be taken to reduce the anticipated impact of an event in case it happens. The preventive actions recommended during project team management might include the following. Cross-training so that in the absence of a team member another team member can take over the assignment. Role clarifications to ensure that all the responsibilities associated with the role are performed. Planning for overtime in anticipation of extra work that might be needed to meet project deadlines. Other change requests and updates. Team management activities can generate some change requests for the project management plan. For example, staffing changes can generate requests for extending the schedule, increasing the budget, or reducing the scope. The change requests should be processed through the integrated change control process. Approved and implemented changes will trigger changes to the resource management plan, schedule baseline, and cost baseline. Of course, due to the changes in assignments and lessons learned in the course of managing the team, there will need to be updates to the issues log project team assignments, and lessons learned register. Updates to organizational process assets. Several kinds of organizational process assets can be updated as a result of project team management. Here are some examples. Input to organizational performance appraisals. 
the project team member's project work performance and interaction with other project team members is a significant way to offer input to the organizational performance appraisal for that team member. Templates and organization standard processes, save them for future projects. Lessons learned database, the lessons learned database should be updated with the lessons learned during team management, which can come from different areas, including the following. Issues and solutions in the issues log. Special skills and competencies of the team members discovered during the project work. Successful and unsuccessful ground rules, conflict management techniques, and recognition events. Tip managing the project team is a complex task when the team members are accountable to both the project manager and the functional manager. Effectively managing this dual relationship is critical to the success of the project and is therefore generally the responsibility of the project manager. Interpersonal skills and an understanding of organizational theories is very important in managing human resources. Motivation is the key factor. Motivating your team. Because you have come so far in studying this book, I must say you are motivated to take the PMP exam, learn about project management, or both. So, what is motivation? Motivation is an internal drive to meet a set of objectives. Internal drive is a state of unrest inside of you. This is how it goes. A need is a deficiency, an absence of something, a whole. Out of need arises the desire to fulfill the need. This desire or want represents dissatisfaction, which creates a state of unrest. This unrest is the drive. When drive is directed at a call for action to meet those objectives that will satisfy the need, it becomes motivation. In a nutshell, the need acts as a catalyst, like an enzyme in a biochemical reaction, that sets you on a journey toward meeting a set of objectives that will satisfy the need. If you want to get optimal results from your computers, you network them appropriately and execute appropriate software programs on appropriate drives in the network. If you want to achieve optimal results from your team, you create the appropriate drives in the team members to execute actions to meet project objectives, in other words, you motivate them, this is how important motivation is, motivation to do some task plus the ability to do that task is equal to performance. So, lack of motivation means poor performance. In a project, motivation begins with you, the project manager. You must be motivated for the project and to motivate the project team members. It's always a good idea to have some formal knowledge of something that you are going to go through. So, here in a nutshell are some theories of motivation. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs Theory According to this theory, people have layers of needs, as illustrated in Figure 10.3 and until the lower layer needs are satisfied, they will not move to satisfy the upper layer needs. For example, if you are unemployed and broke and as a result your very survival is in danger, you don't care about buying health insurance, life insurance, or dating. Herzberg's Motivation Hygiene Theory This theory classifies the factors needed to motivate people into two categories, hygiene factors and motivating factors. Hygiene factors are necessary for motivation but are not sufficient, they do not bring satisfaction, but they prevent dissatisfaction. Some examples are compensation, company policies, level of supervision or ownership of the assigned work, relationship with superiors, subordinates, and peers, and working conditions. Motivating factors are the factors that bring, or increase, job satisfaction. Some examples are challenging work assignments, opportunity for career advancement and accomplishments, opportunity for growth, sense of responsibility, and recognition. Caution! Hygiene factors are related to the work environment, whereas motivating factors, also called motivators, are related to the work itself. McClellan's Achievement Motivation Theory According to this theory, the following three needs motivate people. Achievement this is the need to perform well, achieve success, and get recognized for it. The key idea here is the drive to excel. Affiliation, this is the need or desire for good relationships at work. You want to feel connected at work. Power, this is the desire to move things, to influence people or events. The key term here is world dominance or making a difference. McGregor's XY theory, according to McGregor, there exist the following two types of managers. 
Theory X managers, these managers believe that most people, and hence workers, are self-centered and are only motivated by their physiological and safety needs and are indifferent to the needs of the organization they work for. They, workers, lack ambition and have very little creativity and problem-solving capacity. As a result, they dislike their work and will try to avoid it. They will also avoid taking responsibility and initiative. There is one word to describe Theory X managers, distrust. They distrust their employees. These managers, therefore, tend to be authoritarian. Theory Y managers, as opposed to Theory X managers, Theory Y managers trust their employees. They believe that most of the people are high performers in a proper work environment. This is because most people are creative and committed to meeting the needs of the organization they work for. They also believe that most people like to take responsibility and initiate and are self-disciplined. Finally, they also believe that most people are motivated by all levels of needs in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These managers tend to provide more freedom and opportunity for career growth. Expectancy theory, according to this theory, people are motivated only if they expect a desired outcome or reward. The key idea here is, what is in it for me? The desired outcome here has two components, objectives will be met with this effort, and the performers will be rewarded. Study Checkpoint 10.3 Each comment in the first column of the following table points to a management. Theory in the second column. Match each comment with the corresponding theory in the second column. Scenario Motivation Theory. A. The management is real nice to the employees, and there are lots of perks. But I'm more concerned about my career path once I join this company. 1. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Theory. B. Engineering Manager Bob has a habit that employees don't like. Every time he passes by a cubicle of an employee, he always peeps at the computer screen over the shoulders of the employee to see what the employee is really doing on the computer. 2. Herzberg's Motivation Hygiene Theory C. Rachel Yanovich quit her project management job with the Goo Goo Gaga company immediately after winning the California Super Lotto. She said, well, my money problem is solved. Now, I will do what I always wanted to do. 3. McClellan's Achievement Motivation Theory D. I'm not going to attend this seminar. Basically, I'll be listening to their pitches all day long. What are the odds that I'll win the door prize? 4. McGregor's XY Theory Eve Kushal did not really like the assignment. But, he did it anyway because he did not want to let his manager down. 5. Expectancy Theory Caution. The expectancy theory, applied carelessly, can backfire. For example, if the expected reward is unachievable or not worth the effort, people will get demotivated. The three most important takeaways from this chapter are as follows. To lay the foundations of your project's success, you must negotiate to acquire 1. Individuals with the right skills and capabilities to perform the project work effectively and efficiently, and 2 the best options of physical resources. It is critical for the project's success that you develop and manage the group of individuals to be a high-performing team. Development generally goes through these stages, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Conflict resolution is a critical part of managing the team. Successful conflict resolutions are important for the success of the project. Summary to execute the project, you need to put together a project team that will perform the project work, and you and the team will need physical resources do so. To accomplish these tasks, you use the processes of project resource management. First, you develop the resource management plan, as discussed in Chapter 6, which contains the roles to perform the project, the responsibilities assigned to the roles, and a guide on how to perform other processes in resource management. Then, you estimate the team and physical resources for each project activity, as explained in Chapter 6, using the Estimate Activity Resources process. With this resources information in hand, you perform the Acquire Resources process to obtain individuals and physical resources. The goal is to negotiate to obtain the individuals with the right skills and capabilities to perform the project work effectively and efficiently and to obtain the best options for physical resources. 
Having obtained the group and individuals, you use the develop project team process and manage team process to turn this group into a high-performance team by 1. Identifying the areas of improvement and facilitating that improvement example, competencies, interaction with other team members, and overall team environment, and 2. Tracking performance, providing feedback, resolving conflicts, and managing changes. Finally, use the control resources process to optimize the results by keeping the planned, allotted, and used physical resources in sync with each other. This process is covered in the monitoring and controlling part of this book. Road ahead, in this and Chapter 9 combined, we have discussed the execution of activities from all project aspects except two. These two very important project aspects run through all other aspects and activities. These are project stakeholder management and project communication management, and the executing processes related to these will be discussed in the next chapter. Exams I view. Comprehend. The human or team resource planning, as explained in Chapter 6, is used to determine the roles that will perform the schedule activities and to develop the staff management plan to fill the roles with the team members. The goal of the Acquire Project Resources process is to fill the roles defined in the staffing management plan with real individuals who will perform those roles to execute the project. Regardless of how much control you have over team assignments, always try to obtain the best person for the job by means such as negotiation, for which you do your homework, which includes finding out the availability and competencies of the candidate team members. The project team assignments made through the Acquire Project Resources process are the input to the develop team process, which uses techniques such as training, recognition, and rewards, and other team-building activities to develop a high-performance team from team members who were just a group of people to start with. You must manage the team in order to optimize its performance. Look out! Planning resource management does not assign the resources, assignments happen in the Acquire Resources process. Resource calendars are an output item as well as an input item for the acquire resources process. The project manager should effectively negotiate and exert influence in a positive way to obtain the best possible team to complete the project work. The failure to acquire an effective team can result in missed deadlines, cost overruns, poor quality, and eventually a failed project. Memorize. Team development goes through five progressive stages. Forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. The strategies used to resolve conflicts include avoid slash withdraw, force slash direct, compromise slash reconcile, accommodate slash smooth, and collaborate slash problem solve. Collaboration is the best strategy because it offers a win slash win resolution. Review questions. 1. Which of the following is generally the best conflict resolution technique to use to resolve conflict in your team in most situations? A. Avoidance B. Compromise C. Accommodation D. Collaboration 2. Carl, one of your team members, is arguing with you over how to perform a specific task. At the end of a long discussion, you say, Carl, I know you feel different about it, but please do me a favor and do it this way for my peace of mind. Which conflict resolution technique are you using? A. Avoidance B. Compromise C. Accommodation D. Forcing. 3. Which of the following is not a situation well suited for team development efforts? A. The kickoff meeting B. A conflict between two groups within the team C. Low team morale D. Changes in the budget. 4. You are in the beginning of executing your project, and you need to make assignments to individuals who will do the project work. Which process should you perform? A. Develop Human Resource Plan B. Develop Project Team C. Acquire Project Team D. Make Staff Assignments. 5. Virtual Teams are a tool and technique used in which of the following processes? A. Develop Human Resource Plan B. Develop Project Team C. Acquire Project Team D. Manage Project Team. 6. You heard in the hallway that the project manager of the Da Vinci Code project, named Papu Gloria, has very poor soft skills. If this is true, Papu Gloria needs to improve his a. Software skills b. Interpersonal skills c. Ways of handling equipment d. Capability to use scheduling software. 7. Which of the following is not a standard tool or technique you need in order to acquire a project team? a. Survey technique b. Negotiation c. Virtual teams d. Pre-assignments.
8. Pam Cruz, the engineering manager, receives daily progress reports from all engineers she manages. She also visits the cubicles of the engineers several times a day to ensure that they are working and not just browsing the web. Most of the engineers agree that she is a micromanager. What kind of management theory is she applying? A. Theory Alpha B. Theory X C. Theory Y D. McClellan's Achievement Motivation Theory. 9. Gary Meltzer, the engineering manager, receives weekly progress reports from all engineers he manages. He encourages them to take ownership of their assignments. Most of the engineers agree that he trusts his engineers. What kind of management theory is he applying? A. Theory Alpha B. Theory X C. Theory Y D. McClellan's Achievement Motivation Theory. 10. Susan Travis, the project manager, receives weekly progress reports from all engineers she manages. She rewards the achievements of her employees and always gives credit to her employees for their accomplishments. She is always interested in mentoring her team members and putting them on a career path. She also helps the good performers get the assignments and projects of their choice. A. Theory Alpha B. Theory X C. Theory Y D. McClellan's Achievement Motivation Theory